me feel the precious arms around me, for I cannot find the way alone. I cannot find the way without thee, dear Lord. I know so little about it. Going to learn a lot more when I get there than I know now, but sure I'm looking forward to going. I like that song. It says, I want to know more about my Lord. <clears throat> a lot of things will be there that I don't know about. A lot of things won't be there. That's what this song talks about. Well, there's so many reasons that I want to go to heaven, and Jesus, he's number one. I've read about the street of gold, and all the songs yet to be sung. I know everything's going to be so perfect, that's waiting in that land so fair. But sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there. There won't be any headaches or backaches or stomach aches in that land, no Connecting the dots with the age spots on my hand I won't need reading glasses to see And no arthritis on my knee Sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there You'll never see me up there 
fire shovel and snow. There'll be no poison ivy or grass up there to mow. No mosquitoes, ticks, or fleas, and no red ain't to gnawing on me. Sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there. At supper time, the phone will never ring. With telemarketers selling me everything, my front door will never be locked, and no junk mail in my mailbox. Sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there. There's no calories or fat grains or carb counting on that shore. And you won't have to fight those diets anymore. No treadmill walking for me with these bunions on my feet. Sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there. There'll be no time in heaven through all eternity. So I will never know when April 15th will be so when I'm living beyond the stars I won't need to call H&R cause the IRS won't ever hear from me there won't be any headaches or back aches or stomach aches in that land no or connecting the dots with the age spots on my hand I won't need reading glasses to see and no one will have to eat gluten free sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there well there there's no, well, there's no kudzu on those hills, and you'll never hear the sound of a dentist drill. Sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there, and I won't need to use head and shoulders for my hair, and none of us will have to give these viruses another care. Sometimes I like to think about everything that won't be there. Amen. Amen. Thank God all those things that we dread down here won't be up there. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord for it. Great day today. I, I was glad to see some rain rain me inside. Amen. I, uh, I do have enough sense to get out the rain, although a lot of folks might argue with that. Amen. I, <laughs> God has been a good day at home. I thank the Lord for it. We was over Concord uh, Sunday night and... Uh, uh, had a good service over there. Had a couple of young men uh, saved and was baptized after the service. And it's just a joy to me uh, to see folk get saved. The Bible said that the angels in heaven rejoice over one that comes to repentance. And I thank the Lord for that, getting to be involved in that. Uh, my son in uh, up in Kentucky, he told me that there's been several saved there. He had a baptizing last Sunday and uh, doing well up there. And then Brian, uh, my his oldest uh, son, uh, his next oldest son, and he's working in uh, North Carolina. They've had some folks saved there. Was talking about today was his birthday, I think. Uh, anyway, they had a birthday party. I know that for sure. Hey, Amen. They had a birthday party. Robbie went over there. And I got to be with him, so thank the Lord for that and the blessings of God. Uh, Donnie is doing well. Keep on praying for him. Uh, Seems like he's doing good. Uh, he, Luke, his uh, oldest, uh, middle, youngest, Tucker's brother. Amen. He had a colonoscopy today. Had been having some problems, uh, but he said the doctor said uh, just called a while ago and said the doctor said everything seemed to be fine. They were going to send off some stuff and different things, but uh, we thank the Lord for that. So keep on praying for him, uh, that the Lord continue to help him. Amen. And uh, we thank the Lord for all those who have been saved. God, to spend some time with uh, Do uh, John Waters today. Uh, some of you may know him. He's probate judge in Murray County. Amen. And I got to go up there and talk to him today, working for him. He's opened up a sales lot over on Fort Mountain Road. And I went over and did a lot set for him yesterday. So I went by and uh, got, got a check. Hey, man, that was a good thing. But uh, we went, sat there and talked a while, and it really just turned into a prayer meeting. Uh, when I come back out, Carlene was outside waiting on me. She said, what in the world took you so long? And uh, should you get involved in something? I said, we were just re rejoicing in the Lord. Amen. So I came on outside and he followed me out of the courthouse and come out there and uh, give us uh, give us some money for dinner. And that's always a good thing. Amen. So thank the Lord for all of his blessings. And God just have been saving folks. He told me about 
two that had been saved over his church. I sure was glad today, today to find out he's a pastor at Piney Grove Baptist Church. You know, every time it seemed like when I really like somebody, they'll turn off to be a Mormon or a Hindu or, you know, Jehovah Witness or something. You can't have much. <laughs> but I was sure glad to find out he was a pastor over there at Piney Grove on 2nd Street uh, today as we talk. And I uh, just had a good time in the Lord. Uh, I appreciate the blessings of God today. And uh, we thank the Lord for all of his many blessings. The one's been saved. And I uh, thank the Lord for hearing about that. Uh, I uh, preached over at uh, the camp while Brother Samuel was still there. Uh, uh, some things we can expect from here on in. And uh, we can look forward to The first thing was that we can expect God to keep on saving sinners. Amen. The Bible said he come to seek and to save that which was lost. That's the purpose he came for. Amen. And we can expect God to keep on saving people. Amen. Not Maybe not the, by the masses they used to be. But I'm glad, thank God, he's still... He's still touching for it. He's still saving. And we expect God to keep on doing that till he comes back again. We can expect God uh, to answer prayer. He tells us we have not because we ask not. And I'm glad that God is in the prayer answering business and we can expect him to answer our prayer. You know, it'd be an awful thing. But when you prayed, you didn't feel like God heard you and wasn't going to answer your prayer. But we can expect God to answer prayer. He always answers prayer. Yeah. Sometimes he says, well, well, let's wait a while. Sometimes he said, not right now. Sometimes he said, yeah, let's go for it. Yeah. Amen. But God answers prayer. And we can expect him to do that. And then we can expect God to give us enough grace to deal with the IRS, Brother Green. <laughs> we can expect God's grace to be sufficient for whatever we face. We don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. That's right. And uh, we can expect God to give us enough grace. He said, my grace is sufficient. And uh, so thank God we can expect those things from the Lord. Amen. Appreciate being here tonight. Thank you for coming. And uh, tr uh, trust that God may uh, help you with something, speak to your heart. Uh, I uh, preached along these same lines here not too awful long ago. And as I was studying, just kept being on my heart. And uh, I thought about the preacher that went to a new church. And uh, he took, just took a new church. He got up that Sunday morning and took a text and preached. And it seemed like everybody enjoyed it and liked it real good. And uh, so that night he come back and he took the same text. Took the same, and he preached the same message. And uh, so then on Wednesday night, he took the same text and he preached the same message again. So after about two or three weeks of this, uh, one deacon went to him and said, Preacher said, we really enjoy uh, that we enjoyed that message and we like the way you preach. said, but is there not, you don't know anything else to preach? And he said, oh yeah, I know a lot of other sermons. He said, but as soon as we all get this one, we'll move on to something else. <laughs> so that could be the case. I don't know. This message could be just for me. And I may have not got it yet. <laughs> but in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, we'll start reading in verse number 5. Verse number 5. But if any have caused grief, he hath uh, not grieved me, but in part, that I may not overcharge you all. Sufficient to such a man is the punishment which was inflicted of many. So that contrarywise, you ought rather to forgive him and comfort him. Uh, least perhaps such an one would be swallowed up in over much sorrow. Wherefore, I beseech you that you would confirm your love toward him. For, this, uh, for to this end also did I write that I might know the proof of you, whether ye be obedient in all things. Verse number 10. To whom ye forgive anything, I forgive also. For it is I uh, forgave, see, for if I forgive uh, anything to whom I forgave it, for your sakes forgave I it in the person of Christ. Verse 11, least Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Amen. Father in heaven, we ask you tonight, Lord, that you'd put your blessings upon the reading of the word and bless this service. We sure do need your presence, need your help. I pray the Holy Spirit of God 
would have control. I realized tonight, God, the Bible said it, who so will ascend the hill of the Lord except him that hath clean hands and pure heart. I pray, God, that tonight you'd cleanse me from anything in my life that would hinder, Lord, you and I, Lord, being connected tonight. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Talking about uh, tonight, it really had not given place to the devil. We could look over and use a text verse out of Ephesians uh, uh, 4, 3, 27, where it said, don't give place to the devil. As I studied that along with this, I wrote down some things today that do give place to the devil. And that just right down the line, bitterness, anger, wrath, all of those things give place to the devil. You want the devil to get involved in something, just, just get angry. Yeah. Amen. And you get your anger all stirred up. Amen. The devil will just love that and he'll yeah. take place in it, get involved in it. And the Lord in, instructs you and I as Christians uh, uh, not to give place to the devil. Uh, Proverbs talks about a man, what a hope there is uh, uh, in him if a man is soon to angry. And there's not much hope for him. Amen. A man that can't control his spirit, the Bible tells us, uh, that is, not, uh, is not very well trusted. And so we don't need to give place to the devil uh, by anger and being mad at somebody and not forgiving somebody. Even though you say, well, preacher, they've done me wrong and they deserve me to be mad at. You know, uh, makes me think of, uh, I use Taylor a lot. Uh, she don't get mad at me much, amen. But uh, when she was a little bitty girl, uh, she would have a little temper tantrum or something and Carlene would try to encourage her not to do that and say, Taylor, why do you do that? She said, I have to, I like it. <laughs> Amen. And our old flesh does like it. Amen. Sometimes we get angry and we don't want to get over it right quick. You know, listen, I'm telling the truth. Amen. We like to be angry for a little while. Amen. And be <laughs> so we have to be very careful with that. And uh, the Lord tells us it's, uh, uh, it's very, very necessary. I thought about this today, you know, to get angry and be mad is human. But to forgive and get over it is divine. Right. Amen. God wants us to learn to be forgivers. We read this script here. He said, for whoever I forgive, I forgive it in the name of the Lord's sake. Yes. Not because they ask for it, deserve it, or anything like that. Uh, but we forgive people because they, uh, because Christ forgave us. Yes. And so if we don't want Satan to get advantage of us, we need to learn to forgive people. Mark 11 and 25 and 26 says if we forgive from our heart, then God will forgive us. But if we don't forgive from our, from our heart, then God will neither forgive us. And so uh, we need to learn to, uh, to be forgivers, just uh, be an habitual forgiver. Amen. You, uh, nobody can stop you from, from forgiving them. And the only way that you get on the top side, get advantage of the enemy, is by just learn to forgive. You know, just let things roll off your back like water off a duck's back, you've heard. Amen. Amen. And just go ahead and get over it and go ahead and determine that folks are going to do things that you don't like. That's right. Amen. I wish that I could fix everybody and get everybody to think, uh, to do just like I think they ought to. But boy, what a mess we'd have then. <laughs> People are not going to do what we think they ought to do. Right. A lot, a lot of times, but we just have to accept it and not judge them. We've got plenty of things that we're going to be judged for ourselves. Right. Amen. And so we need to just, just do minutes with the Lord. And when people do things, just pray for them. The Bible said, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one, one that has fallen into sin. Amen. And so we need to learn to forgive and not, if we're not going to let the, uh, the devil get advantage of us. In verse number eight, the Bible says, Wherefore I beseech you, or I beg you, that you would confirm your love toward him. Of course, we know we're talking about this man that had committed immorality in the church and things that fight within the church. Uh, the Bible tells us, he's uh, here, I wish you'd forgive him. And uh, so a lot of time we get involved in that forgiving stuff. So, well, how, how many times last week he did the same thing or last month he did the same thing? 
uh, that was a question in the Lord's time. And he said, forgive him 70 times, seven times. Or there's no limit to how many times we ought to forgive. Amen. Unless we let the devil get advantage of us. Amen. You hold bitterness in your heart. And uh, it'll give place to the devil. Amen. And he'll, be, he'll run the show. Amen. If you have uh, a bitterness in your heart toward your wife or anybody, uh, the devil gets involved. He gets, it takes place and uh, he gets advantage of us. Right. So we need to learn to love one another. Yeah. Amen. To continue to love one another. He said, I wish you'd go ahead and confirm your love to him because if the, the problems he's having could overwhelm him and cause him to go further out into, out into sin. Amen. A lot of times, you know, the, uh, the devil says, well, nobody forgives you, forgives you. And you know, everybody knows that you're an idiot. Amen. And so just why you, why you, why you try to do this? Why you try to do better? And it would actually cause people to go further away from the Lord then if we would confirm our love to him, pat him on the back, say, hey, you know, God will forgive you. You know, you can do it. Keep on keeping on. Amen. And confirm your love toward him. Least the Satan get an advantage of us. <clears throat> if we going to overcome the enemy, we have to love, the, love uh, each other, love uh, one another, love the Lord with all of our heart. And uh, then God will give us the grace to keep on keeping on and Satan will not get an advantage of us. Amen. Amen. So we need to be very, very careful to try to do that. Now I wrote down here that we need to uh, not let the devil get uh, advantage of us by humbling ourselves. I was talking to Brother Waters today and I told him about the first time that I preached God uh, used me and anointed me and boy, I thought I was the cat's meow. Amen. And boy, just went right to my head. Amen. Next two or three times I got up to preach, I couldn't preach a lick. Amen. Amen. God was nowhere around it. And uh, I, I didn't understand what was going on, Brother Steve. Uh, a lot of, an older preacher, he went on to be with the Lord now. But he, was, he came into church one night and we were sitting on the front row. And I was talking to him and I was telling him about God calling me to preach and what all these things was going on and everything. And uh, he said to me, and I've used this before, but still the truth. He said, you know, the Bible says not many wise were called, not many noble, but God chose the base things of the world uh, to confound the wise. And I said, I know that, I know that. He said, you know what that means, though? And I said, well, I think so. Uh, he said, well, it means that God usually just calls dumb, stupid block heads into the ministry. He helped me with my pride issue, amen. I know we've all heard the uh, illustration about the preacher that went to the pulpit all full of himself and he came back down just like a snake uh, on the ground and uh, the pr older preacher sitting there told him, said, son, if you'd have come, uh, if you'd have went up like you come down, you'd have come down like you went up. Right. Amen. We need to remember to humble ourselves that we don't give place to the devil. I was talking to two or three guys last week about the issue they was having, and I told them the Bible said in the book of Proverbs that only by pride cometh contention. So it don't really matter who was right or wrong. There's an underlying thing of pride in, involved in it, and if we could get over that thing of pride, then we could get along a lot better. Right. The Bible tells us to cast out the man with a contentious spirit, and the strife will cease. Amen. And a contention comes by pride. So we need to remember to humble ourselves as Christians. Amen. It's God that does the work and gets the credit. Yes. Amen. We, we just, we're just peons. Uh, we're just servants. Amen. And we need to remember to, uh, to do that unless the devil gets advantage of us. Then we need to re remember to pray. The Bible tells us, uh, uh, that we we got we need to learn to pray uh, if we're not going to be taken advantage of by the enemy. Satan gets an advantage of us whenever wives and husbands are at odds with each other. Amen. First Corinthians seven three three and five. Bible talks about the uh, man belonging to the woman, the woman belonging to the man, and we need to realize that whenever our household is out of order then we're out of order. Right. And the devil takes a hold of that. Right. 
Amen. He'd take a mountain and make a, 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 just anything and make a mountain out of it. Amen. We just have to learn to forgive. Amen. I don't understand uh, why we don't understand that more. There's nobody in the world that I love like I love my wife, but there's nobody in the world that I have to forgive more than my wife. Amen. <laughs> but we have to be right with one another. Yeah. Amen. And the only way to do that is just learn to forgive each other. That's right. <laughs> uh, somebody said never had an argument with a, uh, with a wife about anything or no disagreement. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, that's hard for me to take. Amen. Hard for me to believe. Amen. Amen. Anyway, we have to learn uh, to be... <laughs> Uh, be it be it, be it the right, uh, relationship with our wife. Wrote down three or four more. Verse seventeen, Bible says, "For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God in the sight of God speak we in Christ." And uh, so the devil takes advantage of us whenever we forget to read our Bible and right. divide it. And to study the Word of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Things that get out of hand whenever we forget to study our Bible. Amen. I preached a message a long time ago on three things that must not have uh, cease whenever trouble comes, and that's the one. That's the first one I put down. We must learn to keep on uh, keep on reading our Bible, yes. keep on praying, yes. and then keep on asking. Amen. Those things that needs to continue to happen. So we need to learn to forgive. We need to uh, not fail to study the Word of God. At least Satan would get uh, advantage of us. We need to continue to continue uh, to serve the Lord with our whole heart. Put on the whole armor of God. At least Satan get an advantage of us. You know, I was uh, studying a little bit today and reading. I was thinking about things the devil uses to get advantage of us. And one of them was worry. I mean, if the devil can get us worried about something and fretful about something, then he's got advantage of us. That's right. Amen. Amen. The only way that we, only way we keep, we keep uh, advantage over him is by not worrying. You say, how do you do that, preacher? There's so many things that um, needs to be thought about it. Well, if we give them all to the Lord, Bible says in, T in Timothy, Timothy told, he said, I'm persuaded that God is able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. And so as we give those things that we worry about over into the Lord, uh, then, uh, then, then we can have advantage of the enemy. So we need to be very careful. I'll, let me flip over just a second. Take, won't take but just a minute. <coughs> to Ephesians chapter number four. I want to read that in our hearing. If I can find it right quickly. Ephesians chapter number four. Come on now. Verse 27, where the Bible said, uh, uh, neither give place to the devil. Verse 26 says, be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. You know, we need to, don't, don't go to bed angry with your wife and sleep on it. You have bad dreams. And plus, <laughs> it's awful, amen. Don't go to, don't go to bed uh, mad with the preacher. Amen, forgive him, amen, get over it. Amen. Don't give place to the devil. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. And uh, neither give place to the devil. Let him steal, stole, uh, steal. Let him that stole steal no more. So I wrote down these four things that, give, that uh, we give place to the enemy. When we get angry, whenever we uh, stay angry, and we forget to forgive. Amen. And the, if we'll learn to do that in that order, uh, the devil won't have near as much room to get in our life and get in control of our 
uh, of our home. Amen. Is learn to forgive. Amen. Be an habitual forgiver. And uh, just forgive each other. Love one another. Amen. Treat other people the way you want to be treated. Amen. And God will help us and bless us. Amen. As a church family. Father in heaven, we thank you for this short message. I appreciate, uh, Lord, the, the, the opportunity, Lord, to preach. And I pray, Lord, you'd help me to learn these things and graft them in my mind and my heart uh, that I'd not give place to the enemy. Lord, I don't want to do anything that would give him opportunity to be control uh, of the situations of my life. I pray for the same uh, thought for everybody here tonight. God, you know uh, what needed to be said. I pray that I said what needed to be said. And Lord, I pray you'd help us throughout the week. Lord, be with those uh, special services coming up. And uh, we'll be careful to give you the praise. As we ask in Jesus' name. All right, stand together.